Good morning, everyone. I've got some notes here and I want to make sure I get everything right because there's a lot of moving parts here. So bear with me as I uh, look down and refer to my notes on this particular issue. And you can see that I'm joined today by our, our friends over at Enwin. I've got the fire chief here, Yelena Payne, the director of uh, social services is here. Uh, Vicki, uh, who is the building manager for the owners here. Who else do we have? Dr. Ahmed, of course, from the health unit is here, our city manager. Everyone is here uh, because we want to give you all of the information that we know. Uh, what's been done so far and what we know uh, moving forward. So uh, at the beginning, let me just say that the safety of our residents uh, displaced following this fire uh, certainly has been a priority for us at this time. And this morning we held an emergency meeting with our community partners to provide updates on this developing situation. And I wanted to uh, ask everyone to come here today at this site so we can have a conversation about where we're at. On November the 12th, a fire in Westcourt Place resulted in many residents uh, being evacuated from their homes. In fact, there's over 160 units in the building, more than 200 residents, uh, and it resulted in a mandatory evacuation. What we do know uh, is that a fire broke out uh, in the second floor of the parking structure at the building. The intense smoke and the heat made it difficult for crews to reach the fire, and the flames spread to seven other vehicles in the parking garage as well. Uh, the fire itself took out the main power feed to the building, resulting in a total lack of power, no heat, no water uh, to this high rise. Windsor Fire and Rescue Services responded with multiple firefighting units working to get the fire under control. Later in the day, uh, the Windsor Essex Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Ahmed, called for the mandatory complete evacuation of the building due to the lack of power, the lack of heat, and the lack of water. And this means, of course, that the elevators and the fire alarms were also no longer functional. Firefighters went door to door in the building on Tuesday evening to help evacuate residents safely. In response to this event, Windsor did what it always does. It stepped up, we came together to assist those in need. The City of Windsor and the Red Cross set up a temporary reception center at 400 City Hall Square for those who were displaced. Some residents uh, that were displaced were also, also able to arrange home stays with friends and family, while others required shelter, food and support. We set up a reception center with cots and other supplies at the WFCU Center last night. Buses were provided to transport the affected residents. And at the WFCU Center, we brought together social services, fire and rescue services, Windsor Police Services, the Health Unit, EMS, the Red Cross, the Humane Society, and other partners to help support the 26 adults and six children and one pet who spent the night at our facility. Today, we continue working together to ease the stress and the uncertainty that this developing situation brings, of course, for the displaced residents and all the others affected by the fire. Now, when Windsor Fire and Rescue Services cleared uh, Enwin crews to go back into the building, they confirmed that the Enwin electrical equipment was not damaged by the fire and Enwin workers were able to restore the power to those who were unaffected by the fire. Those you saw uh, on Olette Avenue and other places along uh, from here to Olette Avenue. And by 4.45 yesterday, power was restored to all customers in the area, with of course the exception of those residing in this building. As of now, the Westcourt Place's owner is required to repair the building's electrical distribution system, which was damaged by the fire. When that is done, the Electrical Safety Authority will inspect the work and issue an authorization to connect and restore power to the building. Once the ESA approval has been obtained, the building owner will be allowed to close their disconnect switch and the building will be back in power. In the interim, the building remains closed, which includes the court offices on the ground level and all residential areas above. While Fire, Enwin and the ESA work with the building owner and her insurers to restore access, the City of Windsor continues to work on solutions for those who are displaced. As it's too soon to confirm when the building will reopen to residents, we have several items we're working on to provide relief to those who are involved. The building's manager has agreed to post up to date inf information as available uh, to its Facebook page. Fire is working to arrange times when residents can bri briefly access the building to retrieve uh, essential belongings, of course, things like medication uh, and clothing, thinking that this is going to last for at least 72 more hours. That plan is being developed today and details will be released to the public very soon. Again, people can expect that the building will be closed for 72 hours or longer. So we are encouraging those that are coming to take uh, items out, uh, medication and that, to take what they need to last at least that amount of time. We are also working to secure a uh, temporary workspace for the displaced provincial offense office staff and members of the public needing to access court services. The City of Windsor's communications department will provide updates uh, to the city's website and to 311 as available and we will have that work done sometime later this afternoon. 
We were really asking those uh, who are staying with friends and family to plan to stay a little bit longer. Uh, we're providing information and support to the building's owner and to the property manager as she seeks to secure temporary accommodations for those currently sheltered uh, at the WFCU Centre. And I want to say that uh, I understand that conversations uh, with the building owner, not the manager who's beside me, but the building owner herself, uh, indicate that there may not be a full understanding of the magnitude uh, of this event and the damage that has been caused. Uh, and so we're really asking the building owner to, uh, to take note of what's happened here and make sure that the insurer uh, is on site as quickly as possible to provide the resources that are needed uh, to get this building up and going. And because this is private property, uh, we need the owner to step in a way that we haven't seen her doing in the last 24 hours. Uh, so from fire's perspective, the investigation is ongoing. The Ontario Fire Marshal is on scene and continuing with the investigation. At uh, this time, we have no determinations for cause. Uh, Westcourt Place, again, has 164 units, over 200 people living in the building, and we are doing what we can to help resolve the situation uh, for those residents who are impacted uh, by this particular event. Yes, there has been communication uh, on the phone with the owner, and, and I was very uh, uh, clear in my remarks that we don't think that the building owner that we spoke to uh, understood, understands the magnitude uh, and the seriousness of what's happened here. So uh, we're really making sure that uh, the public knows that the City of Windsor is doing everything it's, that we can do uh, help to be supportive uh, of the folks that are displaced. But at the end of the day, because this is private property, uh, the building owner and their insurer has responsibility to make sure that they're stepping up and doing all that they need to do to get their building back in business. And so uh, I can say that because I'm dealing with the tenants and I've spoken with the tenants and I visited them yesterday at City Hall. Uh, but we too, as the City of Windsor, are tenants in this building and we want to get our operation up and going as well. So uh, I just hope that that, uh, you know, through this message here, obviously Vicki uh, has been great behind us, the property manager, and hopeful that she'll convey also uh, the, the concerns that we have as a city, as a tenant in this building, uh, to help encourage the owner to, to do what she can as quickly as possible. This is private property, so the, the equipment that Enwin owns that they were able to access to turn and restore the power on to folks on OLED and elsewhere was actually Enwin equipment. The equipment that feeds, the power equipment that was damaged that feeds the building is not Enwin's equipment. It's owned by the building owner, so it's private property. So as we understand, uh, work will have to happen to bring in a, a generator of some sort uh, that can help feed power to the building in the short term because in 72 hours it's unlikely uh, that the equipment that was damaged would be fully restored. Right now we're planning for 72 hours. Uh, we have Red Cross and social services staff, we have EMS, we have police and we have security all at the WFCU Center. Um, you know, our primary, um, you know, our, our primary uh, responsibilities right now is just ensuring that the residents who have been displaced and don't have friends and family to go to uh, have the supports uh, that they need and uh, that their immediate needs are being met. The investigation is ongoing. Uh, we know that it started, it was in the parking garage area. What actually initiated the fire uh, hasn't been determined yet. Uh, at some point in time today, the, the uh, fire marshal will conclude his investigation and then file a subsequent report. So, it occurred down in the area of the parking garage. The exact cause of ignition, we do not know at this time.